Hey guys, this is Primeval, and I'm about to start a second True Start Location game after our first one. Um, you guys were really excited for the start of this new series, and most of you voted on re-rolling as the Celts. Um, there were some calls for continuing the last game, some calls for trying a different sieve, for maybe rebaking some of the settings, but we've gone with just a new start, and the start is quite a bit better. We've got two fish and a deer, which is more than we had to go on last time. Possibly even more stuff. Three fish and a deer. So growth-wise, it'll be about the same as the last start, but we start off right away with the three forests so we can get that faith going. I still want to play with Heathen Conversion, which will let me auto-convert any barbarians that my missionaries happen to come across, which in some situations might be really powerful, but mostly is just for fun. So same plan as last time. Uh, we've got a number of mods, which are mostly uh, cosmetics. We've got the Enhanced User Interface mod slash um, DLC. We've got more luxuries and more pantheons, which shouldn't have a huge effect on gameplay. The only major gameplay modification is um, we can capture, when we capture a city, we can build out of that city the unique units of that sieve, um, and there's a 15% increased production cost for that unit. Um, but that requires that that sieve has to have had the technology for their unique unit at the time of that city's capture. All right, enough intro. Let's go. Uh, we can turn the yields off. Oh, they are off. And found our city. And we'll get started right away on that monument. We can also queue up a worker, have a look at what tiles we're working. Yeah, we'll, we'll work this. It's not bad. Um, Two food, two gold. If if I could buy that deer tile, sixty-five dollars. All right, we'll we'll consider doing that later. Now we do want to found that religion. We also have at least one granary resource within range, so we're gonna go pottery first here. And I do need to make sure my volume's going through it is. Okay. We're good here. Now I will go and post the initial save for this map over to Civ Fanatics or on a Google Share or something. Alright, we also have Marble to the North. Which I think we had on our last playthrough on this map as well. Now, maybe I should have started scouting to the south. A Devadi Wab. Uh, you can't adjust the stream quality. I think that's a feature that's generally restricted only to Twitch partners, which I am not. But if you really like my stuff and want me to become a Twitch partner, um, <laughs> feel free to promote me to all your friends and on social media. Alright, so we just met Elizabeth. We are playing with 43 sieves, so some of the sieves uh, will have either a blank, blank screen or a static screen. I did load up another mod that is supposed to give me a static leader screen instead of a blank leader screen, so hopefully that'll work. Luckily, we do have Elizabeth as uh, an animated screen with, uh, with the voice acting, which is a nice touch. All right, see you later, Elizabeth. Now there are ancient runes on this map, but I don't think I'm going to find any. We are on the tiny Isle of Great Britain here, and um, plus the DDI does start with more units. We went in the wrong direction, so unfortunately we're not going to get any of those ancient ruins. Now there have been a number of comments on the way I pronounce runes, 
or ruins. Um, I guess Hermione Granger studies ancient ruins and archaeologists uh, examine or dig up ancient ruins. Um, ruins rolls so much more easily off the tongue, and I don't often have the need to make the distinction between runes and ruins, so hopefully um, as I interchange between the two, no one will become too uh, perturbed by that. The purpose of language is communication, and I think I am still getting the point across. Plus, ancient ruins and ancient runes are, are both, both cool things. Okay, um, this start is better than our last start in that we have, let's see, religious idols. Every one of our luxury resources is going to provide us the faith bonus, so let's get that going. Gold, silver, and copper, and we have each of those. Okay, cool, we're growing in three, monument in five. The new citizens gonna go with production focus right onto this awesome gold hammer faith tile. We'll see seven. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so so far off to a good start. A much better start than the last time we tried uh, the Earth map with the Celts, and that's um, the main reason is we didn't have to move north because we've got the other forest tile, and we also have this nice. Uh, relevant food luxury. I think last time we had lapis, which um, wasn't actually that bad, but, but we're liking this a lot more. Not only do we have the gold, but we also get the faith, now that we have religious idols running. Hey, Levitate J, we are playing on Didi. And it looks like uh, Elizabeth here is about to settle her second city. The DDAI, if you weren't aware, does start with a settler, so they can get that second city out really quickly. Yeah, they haven't settled their second city yet. I don't want her to wander much farther north with that settler, so let's just... We got here just in time to block that off. Not that the AI would change their mind if their chosen settler location was blocked off. Um, but we could certainly delay them, and were they a human, delaying them by a few turns uh, might have been effective. But they did settle far enough south that um, I am feeling happier than I would have been had they settled, say, one tile north here. Yeah, then they would start swallowing up my sheep, which they could still do, but it's not guaranteed. Alright, there's the growth. Working the gold and production with faith. Excellent. Monument in one turn. Start work on the worker. Switch over to the shrine or the granary. Can I afford that deer tile now? No, it's still $65. And next turn. Yes, more realistic. We've got sheep in Scotland, uh, some sheep in Northern Ireland as well and uh, some deer. Deer in the Kingswood. Alright, so there's London. Uh, now, the last time I was playing, I think I was still in Beyond Earth mode, where I was thinking I needed to scout out the full coastal route before I could send a trade route, but this is Civ 5, Brave New World, so we just need to see the tile. We don't even need to be able to see the coast bit and then um, sending out a coastal trade route will auto-scout the route itself. Um, so we'll definitely want to get uh, some coastal routes going with England. Um, the plan is to take them over and, and take their ability to build ship of the line. Uh, but we're going to need them to be friends with us early uh, to catch up on tech because with these hills, with the forest, I I don't think I can crack them, especially with the two cities so close together and being able to share bombards. I'm not going to be able to crack them with um, our Celtic warriors. So, 
Maybe if we can get up to Goliath first, which seems unlikely, even with uh, getting some good science from trade routes. Um, but if we have iron, we might be able to race them to frigates with, uh, say, an Oxford bulb. But that's still a ways away. We'll see how that goes. Levitate J, I definitely prefer Civ 5 to Beyond Earth. And I'm a huge fan of sci-fi, so it's definitely the execution and not the theme. Okay, we've discovered pottery, excellent, expanded it to the silver tile. We can go and buy the deer tile. If I want to keep growing here, I should do that. Alright, let's go granary. Granary in 10. If I were to be working the deer tile instead, uh, I would delay the granary by two, but I'd actually be able to grow. So yeah, let's go and buy this deer tile. Switch over here, it does lower our faith return by one, but we get the citizen in 12 instead of zero. So yeah, definitely, definitely happy with that. And give up the granary and the shrine. Hmm. So I think we're going to go piety here since I do want to play with the heathen conversion from reformation, which means I'll likely want to delay that shrine until I have the bonus, which does time out into right here. Now, do I want the worker first or the shrine? Last time, we reached 200 faith to spawn a great prophet before the last religion was founded, but we had bad luck with the random number generator and I never was able to found a religion. So I want to get up to 200 before there's only one religion left, which might mean I need to prioritize that shrine. But getting the worker out will be better for growth, and production will be able to improve all of this stuff, sell those resources to the AI right away. Um, so it's definitely, definitely close. Okay, so next. If we do want to improve those resources, then mining. We'll go mining and then into sailing the cargo ships. Joyer, yes, so this start is much better than our last start. I'll post the save uh, out over um, after I post this to YouTube. So you can have a go at this map as the Celts as well. Would you be interested in a trade agreement with England? I would be interested in a trade agreement, Elizabeth. I'd be happy to have that small trickle of gold in, and you already know where my capital is. Having an embassy with me will improve our relations, so I'm very happy that you proposed that. I'm also quite happy that currently you don't covet my lands. That could make uh, for a difficult time. If, if uh, Elizabeth did covet my lands, hmm, not my lands, although she might certainly do that. Um, if she did covet my lands, I would definitely offer that embassy and um, sell her an early luxury and then hopefully get over to a declaration of friendship. <laughs> Innovate space. Uh, Civ 5 was slow out of the gate too, and that's very true. Um, I, I don't cut Beyond Earth as much slack because it already had the example of Civ 5 to work with. Um, used the same engine. Um, they, they had all of that going for them, but it, it still fell pretty flat. Civ 5, and in fact, probably every Fraxis game, should be early access because they, they need so much work on it. Um, at the beginning. All right, let's go and grab piety here. Um, there are some people who aren't really a fan of the piety slash reformation uh, for heathen conversion plan, but I, I have, even though I haven't played much Civ recently, I haven't played Civ 5 in a while, and I want to do something, something unusual, something interesting. So we're, we're going with the heathen conversion plan here. Incidentally, I did test it. A embarked missionary can convert barbarian 
uh, naval units. So if the barbarians happen to generate, say, frigates, which is unlikely, barbarians don't generally make units that require strategic resources, um, but they could certainly spawn Goliaths. And um, if we had a missionary out there with heathen conversion, that would be a bunch of free Goliaths. And we are on the northern edge of the map. There should be areas where barb camps will spawn unharassed, and hopefully they'll turn out a nice navy with the heathen conversion that hopefully we'll be able to get, and we'll convert ourselves some real Vikings to help with our cause. I also am streaming some nature sounds in the background. This is from the website uh, naturesounds4.me. And uh, the reason I have that going is, well, I, I like having a nice, soothing, calm stream. But also, when I listened back to the last episode, um, there was almost no ambient sound from Civ. And of course, I can't play the Civ music. Uh, because uh, Fraxis doesn't have the rights to that, and even if they did, they probably wouldn't grant monetization rights to Let's Players. And so, all of every time you play Civ with the music in the background, it gets flagged on YouTube, um, and that causes all sorts of trouble. But instead of having complete silence, uh, complete silence when I, I don't have anything to say, we get these nice beach sounds, the odd seagull. I'm enjoying it. Anyways. So Lowell Tractor, we are playing on standard speed. DD, well, we can bring up this. Uh, so the Celts. With our Druidic Lore, we're making the Two Faith right off of turn zero. That's uh, the giant Earth map. This is the yet not another Earth map uh, map script. And then we're on huge, DD, and standard speed. And uh, someone else has founded the Pantheon. We've expanded to encompass some fish, which is definitely nice. Getting over to the sheep is a lower priority. If we could expand to all the fish naturally, I'd be really happy. Uh, because once we get the lighthouse online, Edinburgh will be absolutely an amazing city. Emblem fire, yes. Um, I don't know where you are in the world. It's a morning for me, so this is a relaxing morning. I really don't like mornings, especially mornings where the sky is overcast and the rain is coming down. So we've got today, Toronto, morning, we've got a really gray sky. I really should have bought one of those um, seasonal affective disorder lamps. Um, I was really happy that that winter ended and we're, we're getting some earlier and stronger sunrises, but it's not so nice when that's completely covered up by rain clouds. This is an awesome spawn, definitely a Wilksy 7. Which is good, because this game is going to be tough. A huge earth with 42 other enemy civs on duty. Um, we need at least a reasonable start to make this happen. Call me happy, good morning. Although, <laughs> as I was saying, not a fan of mornings. So we just grew again, working 
the gold tile for some awesome yields. That kicks the worker out in nine, or would I rather the shrine? I think I'd rather the shrine. It's only three turns now that we've opened the uh, piety opener. And I do want to get that faith value up so we can be sure to grab our religion this time. Although really, there are no guarantees, as someone already grabbed Desert Folklore. Ah, uh, Desert Folklore is already out. So whoever grabbed that, it was probably Egypt, is definitely going to get the first religion. So long as we can get to the 200 while there are, say, two or three religions left, we should be safe to found our own. But there's a lot of uncertainty and randomness in this huge 43 civ game. Emblem Fire, yes. Right now, the tentative plan is for a Goliath rush to take England. Um, this terrain, plus the fact that they're probably going to have massive unit spam, uh, spam is not going to be favorable for a Compsipo Celtic Warrior rush. Okay, let's uh, grab the Shrine Temple of Faith bonus there, and that's going to be relevant in a couple turns. We'll soon be up to plus 6 faith per turn, which is quite good. And um, playing with fewer sieves would almost certainly guarantee us a religion. And hopefully will have us on, a, on course for a religion in this game. Yeah, selling the Silver Mountain would be nice, and we would still get the um, Druidic Lore full 2 faith bonus, but it would require uh, 2 turns of moving, which I I didn't want to do, especially since I'm feeling really tight on the faith generation line. Ooh, we're actually one of the world's busiest people. That is really good. Let's uh, have a look at demographics here. Um, well, <laughs> we don't have the highest manufactured goods. Uh, so that value was uh, for individual cities. Or was it? Huh. Anyways, uh, it's, it's nice to know that we're not too far behind on production compared to some other AIs. Next turn. Uh, call me happy. We're playing with a number of mods. The we're playing with uh, a true start location, 43 sieve set of mods, which apart from what I just said, shouldn't affect gameplay too much, other than the fact that we're playing on a massive earth-shaped map with true start locations. The mod that most significantly changes gameplay, at least will eventually change gameplay, is the uh, Unique Unit Acquisition mod. I forget the exact name. I'll post that in the description once we're on YouTube. And um, I do have a video on YouTube that has a link to all the mods. Um, this mod lets us build out unique units when we capture enemy cities. So if I capture England once they have um, the frigate tech, which has eluded me uh, navigation. Once England has navigation, if I capture one of those cities, I'll be able to train Ship of the Lines out of that city uh, with a 15% cost increase. And since we're playing with 44 other civs, being able to build out some of their unique units sounds like a lot of fun. I don't know how much of an advantage it will be, but it will definitely be fun flavor-wise. The other mods that I have going are also for flavor. We've got uh, more luxuries and more pantheons. I haven't come across any of the new luxuries in this game yet, um, but the art for them is quite nice, and on a huge map, having a little more resource luxury diversity um, seemed like a good idea. Look, see, yes, you may post links. Uh, as long as they're relevant to the stream, do, and uh, and not um, <laughs> definitely not to any malware, but uh, I trust that you're not going to be doing that. So we're going to be generating um, enough faith for the profit at our current faith generation in 20 turns, which will put us at turn 59, which um, seems reasonable for founding a religion, but you never know. There are no guarantees.
someone, one religion has already been founded, six more to be founded, our chances are good, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, we'll just fortify here. We don't need to sit right on England's borders. I don't think the AI likes that very much. Ah uh, yes, we'll see. Thanks. That's the link to Conquest for Unique Unit Mod. That's the one that I'm using. There goes the Great Library, or Religion Before the Great Library. Um, so I'm fairly certain that the religion founded was the Desert Folklore. Power religion, yeah. So Eastern Orthodoxy was founded by someone. Uh, I'm thinking Egypt. And they went with initiation rites and pagodas. Two follower beliefs, or a founder follow combo, that I would have been happy to grab for myself. So I'm definitely jealous of the Eastern Orthodoxy tenants. Uh, so, Haggy, I am playing with the More Luxuries mod and the Modified Pantheons mod. Um, all of the Modified Pantheons are very reasonable. They changed, what they did change was uh, they reworked a couple of the traditional ones. For example, Earth Mother no longer gives a bonus from Salt, but Marble instead, which is good. I don't think any of these Pantheons now... Okay, so uh, Purification Rituals gives the bonus from Salt, but we what we got went with was Religious Idols, which in the mod gives faith from gold, silver, and copper. So that's what that's all about. And Wilksy, or anyone, if you could... All right, awesome. So wilksy has got the mods covered. And um, you could also post a link over to the Celts game I played on the same map with the same mods on my YouTube channel, or at least copy-paste the description from that video where it does list all the mods that I'm using. Okay, so we're gonna have sailing. After the worker, I'm definitely gonna go and switch over to a cargo ship. Hopefully Elizabeth is gonna start sending me some trade routes, but she could easily get at least one internal going here. Um, but, I mean, we're on an island. She doesn't... Actually, she'll definitely have met uh, probably France, probably the Netherlands. So she does have options for other trading partners, but I really hope she sends uh, some trade routes my way. That will really help us here. Still six religions to be founded. We'll be at 200 faith in 15 turns. All right, I think... Hmm. Revealing the iron is pretty important for planning where we're going to settle, but it's going to be quite a while before we can kick out a settler. Another treasure would be nice, but it's going to take us a while to build out a cargo ship anyways, so I'm, I'm tempted to go optics first here. Well, let's see the timing on that cargo ship. 15 turns. The lighthouse is going to be really powerful. Let's go into optics here. And queue up the cargo ship. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> we'll see seven, greater than Nightbot. That's right, innovate space and uh, another thanks to we'll see seven. Edinburgh has grown. Excellent. So we've got a lot of production now, a lot of faith generation, but working this particular tile combination isn't going to be great for growth. We are at four citizens, which is pretty reasonable. Of course, the more citizens, the better. Um, but there aren't any other fantastic food tiles. We could buy our way over to the sheep, but the sheep isn't great. Until we get that lighthouse, it's going to be slow growth. 
We really want that faith income, so yeah, we'll, we'll go with the slow growth for now. Just uh, have all those guys locked down for maximum generation of religious idols. Sacred cows and all the rest. But what do I want to improve first? Um, all of them will get me plus one production, so it doesn't really matter which I go for. Alright, let's get the gold online first. We can also get a little more intel on the ocean there. Yes, PS Falcon. Last game, I think we st were still at one pop. Maybe just hitting our second pop. So definitely, definitely much stronger to start than the last time we tried with the Celts. Um, I did not, so I'm av avoiding tradition for two reasons. One, the reworking of the tree does mean uh, that it's a little less favorable. Uh, not getting that free early monument uh, is a little off-putting, but I also wanted to do something different. So piety opener with the whole plan of going for heathen conversion. But tradition wouldn't have been bad. Uh, Liberty, not so much, because we don't really have space to expand to. If we can beat England to uh, Ireland here, then then that would be good. That's a spot to settle. Uh, this little island here might be a reasonable spot to settle as well. I think one of our viewers last time described, maybe not the island, but this region as the Herb Rides. Um, my international geography isn't great. I am not as well-traveled as... Well, as I might like to be, or or as as many people are. Yes, Daniel, <laughs> we're going piety, not necessarily because it's good, but because it's interesting. Okay, some more pantheons going there. Still, six religions left to be founded. Ten turns until we hit the two hundred faith for the great prophet. So things are looking good. <laughs> Emblem Fire is not a fan of the heathen conversion plan. Yeah, it, it might not be a good plan, but it'll hopefully be interesting. <laughs> People are not fans of piety, which is understandable. It's true, with 43 sieves, a lot of that empty space is going to be covered up. We're not going to find nice barbarian camps. I'm hoping that... Um, Greenland. Greenland shouldn't be settled too early. Greenland hopefully will be a good source of barbs. Maybe Iceland, but then again with 43 sieves, they're all going to be jumping in the water going for that. Um, I, I haven't looked too closely at the not yet another earth map or yet not another whatever. Uh, the actual name is, that's the risky run when you give your mods a really long name. Um, I'm hoping that the Northern and Southern Hemispheres will also have spots to spawn barb camps and we can make use of heathen conversion. Otherwise, we'll have to use the heathen conversion on discontent citizens when we might uh, go extremely unhappy on purpose. That might be a fun thing to do too. Daniel is repping sacred sites, which if I could found a lot of cities could be good fun. But... Um, for the same reason that the barb camps might be a problem, um, making good use of sacred sites is, is going to be similarly difficult. Would you be interested in a trade agreement with England? Yes, yes I would. I'd like to make a declaration of friendship with you, Elizabeth. Let's work together. Now has Elizabeth has Elizabeth sent me a trade route? She has. 
Has she? Um, well, as soon as the mouse over gets us some intel. All right, she hasn't, but we are friends, so hopefully, hopefully she'll send us one soon. Um, we'll have that cargo ship done in five turns, and that'll definitely boost our science output. Elizabeth, don't tell me you sent double internal trade routes between your two cities here. Log 85, I'm playing on a True Start Location Earth map, so um, this is England. <laughs> Emma Fire, my apologies for the long turn times. They're only going to get longer, and um, if I had maximum multitasking capability, we could certainly try to mix my commentary over during the turn transitions. The other option is a possibility, but seems unlikely, is for me to record this purely offline and just pause the recording in between each step, but I like having the interaction with chat, so I don't think I'm going to go that route. Even though it does mean really long potentially really boring turn transitions, but I think I think you'll get used to it. You'll get into a nice zen. You'll resign yourself to the long turn transitions. They'll become soothing. Like a nice nice space where you can relax and forget your troubles. Alright, there goes the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus. Still six religions and we are only three turns away from hitting Great Profit Generation, so um, I'd say we're guaranteed a religion here, but I might be counting my chickens before they hatch, or counting my profits before they spawn. More accurately, but less... less of an actual saying. Six turns to optics, that's going to be awesome. And, well, religious tolerance isn't going to help us for a while. It, it will eventually be very helpful. I'm, the AIs are really good and really aggressive about spreading their religion. They also have a discount to, um, I think they have a discount to their faith by cost, although maybe they don't. I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, plus, because they are really good at city spam, they have tons of faith per turn, they'll send missionaries everywhere, not to mention great profits, so we're definitely, even if we do found our own religion, which I'm hoping we will, uh, we'll definitely have use for religious tolerance, um, but I want to get over to uh, the Reformation as quickly as possible, and if, as some of the chat is worried, that um, these other civs are going to go and destroy every barb camp out there, we want to make use of some of that heathen conversion before it's too late. Okay, there goes another religion. Now there's five religions left. We have uh, 200 faith in two turns. That other religion founded was Judaism with the gold bonus pantheon, um, which is one of the new or the modded pantheons, temple happiness and faith for foreign cities. Interesting. Alright, so hopefully we'll get that religion. I'm feeling much better about our chances than last time. Emma Fire is liking the soothing waves. Yes, so I definitely agree about the, the silence during turn times and, and the long turn times. Um, I found that when I listened back to the last time we did the uh, True Start Location 43 Civ map that the turn times ended up being pretty quiet. So I've, uh, I'll put a link in the YouTube description over to the Nature Sounds website, naturesounds4.me, where I'm uh, streaming the nice seagulls and, and uh, soothing waves in the background. I also have some trees rustling and uh, uh, some forest noises as well on an uh, intermittent timer. Uh, but I should have saved that whole spiel for the turn transition, 
but uh, maybe we'll get better at that as as this series continues. Okay, um, a lighthouse would be really nice. We have optics in but three turns. In the meantime, we if we want to do some scouting, we could work on a trireme. Scouting would be good. We could meet some more civs. Meeting more civs um, would give us more potential trading partners and also decrease the cost of our research technologies since on DD they're all going to be way ahead of us. So the more civs we meet faster, the more of a discount we'll have to that future cost. We, yes, um, Guliam 65, maybe I should have put turns into a settler. We are about to get optics, so we can try embarking to Ireland. We just met William here. Let's swap. Well, we can sell him an embassy, get some gold per turn coming in. But yes, um, oh nice, so we got a great profit. How many religions are left? Still four religions left to be founded. Let's get this going. Found a religion, and Tengrism is still available. I, I really like this icon. Um, I think last time my chat told me that it's uh, something to do with uh, ancestor worship, which is also fine. As far as worshiping things goes, that seems reasonable to me. Now, um, initiation rites is gone, but Tithe is available, so we'll grab that. And let's see, we could go with mosques. Mosques wouldn't be bad, since I think we're going to try to get really good faith generation. Religious community wouldn't be bad either. Let's go. I'm liking mosques here, but we'll let the chat weigh in on this decision while we go and consider what else we're going to do. So, we can go and put a turn into a settler, and then after the settler is done, or even before the settler's done, we can start work on the lighthouse uh, next turn when optics finishes. Jaxter J, I did restart this map uh, from the Sunday stream. 